Okay, before this video begins, I just wanted to make it clear to everybody that I am not obsessed with Doki Doki Literature Club. But check out this cool stuff I got. You want to see? I got that. I check this out. I got a bunch of things I got. I got I got this hat, and uh, I got a couple of shirts. Wait, you're just starting the video? No, wait, don't, 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 don't! YouTube Lamb on his Wild Boy Five Six Nine Nine. Welcome back to Delky Delky Exit Music. Um, I know that intro was a little bit shitty, but I decided to forget shoots and giggles because I, I got a momentum to. I'm really obsessed with Delky Delky Larger Club in the French in this series games. Um, I don't know what came across me. I'm just really ups obsessed because I got the uh, Delky Delky Larger Club. Have you got Monica, Natsuki, Chiari, and Yuri? And I got a couple shirts. I got a Natsuki shirt sure on because as i said before that this game is a natsuki game a game about natsuki and the relationship with your characters and all that so um yeah let's jump into it we picked up we're gonna pick up where we left off on the last episode let's do it beep 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 i jerk awake waking natsuki as well hey pretty girl uh sorry i forgot to turn my phone off Natsuki lays back down and closes her eyes. It's fine, Colton. I check my phone to see who tried to call me. Ciara's mother. Oh, no. That can't be good. Climbing out of the bed and moving into the hall, I call back and ask if everything's all right. No, everything is not all right. She explains that Ciara had a meltdown last night. She was hysterical, screaming that she wanted to die, that life was nothing but pain and seamlessly endless suffering. She tells me that Ciara has been admitted to the hospital. Apparently, the two of them will be back in a few days. She also instructs me to check my mouth. Check my mail. Apparently, Siori came by last night to see if see of us when we got back. Instead of knocking, she dropped the letter off. I wish Siori and her well and headed downstairs. I can't believe this happened again. Uh, at the foot of the door, there's an envelope with my name on it. Turning open, I began to read. Siori. Life isn't work. It's nothing but suffering. Day by day, my mind is flattering. Lots of death. Depression is rising. If I end up dead, it won't be surprising. I stare at the wall and think about this. I've been feeling this way since I was a kid. I stare at my knife. Not not that too messy. I take I think of some pills, swallow in vain. I take take I think of a gun at my head. I would aim. I would sleep sound and not to hate to take the pain and suffering. I live through each day. I'm mentally exhausted and trying to keep up. But all all I do is want to sleep and never wake up. Man. I can't believe what I'm reading. Not again. I'm glad her mom took her to the hospital. I noticed the written on the back. I wish I was her. I feel sick. I can't believe this. Natsuki walks up behind me. What's the matter? I wordlessly, I wordlessly hand her the poem. Oh, God. Natsuki's handed back to me before she noticed the scribble on the back. Wait, there's more. It takes her a second to process what I mean. She listens to the grab of paper letting the fall out of her hands. Oh, how does she even? No clue. We both stand at the doorway for a moment. Eventually, we both take a seat on the couch again. You should call. You should call. Maybe ask her mom if she wants to visit. That's a good idea. I ring Sierra's mom and she answers right away. I asked her if Sierra would like me to visit. According to her, she loved it. I let her know that I'll be there as soon as I can. Looks like I'm going right now. You coming with? No, I don't really want to get involved. So you'll be okay here by yourself for a few hours? Yeah, I'll just watch TV or something. I think I'll, I think I'll get my clothes washed. I've been wearing your stuff for two days now. All right, sure. I take my phone and my keys and off the table. I nip I nip her on the cheek as I pass her seat again. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I lock the door behind me, head into the bus stop. I barely make it to the stop in time. Man, I hope she doesn't really kill herself. It's only a short ride to the hospital. I enter through the emergency doors, moving as quickly as in allowed. I find a reception desk and explain that I'm here to visit Sierra. They give me Sierra's room number. I move quickly to the mental health wing. I find her number and enter the room. Siori. Colton. Siori and mother leaves the room and give us some privacy. I found your poem. I figured. Siori, what's the matter? I told you I'm always here for you. Speak to me. Well, last night I wanted to, but all I could hear through the door was you, you and her laughing. It was like the two of you were laughing at me. Siori, you don't understand. No, I get it. It makes perfect sense. Siori, I... Do you know how much it hurts to see you happy? To that I never to that I'll never be needed. It feels like a knife is being plunged in my chest cold over and over and over again. I can't stand it anymore. Siori not to keep staying with me because Colton, you don't need to rub it in. You're happy with her, you don't need me anymore. There's no point in hiding it. Just go. Siori, please just let me explain. Colton, go away, please. Haven't heard the commotion and there's peeks in asked through the door. She asked if there's a problem. 
Please just get him out of here. Sorry, wait, please. Complying with the nurse's request to leave, I force my way out, making my way out of the wing. I escort her back to the reception area where I'm instructed to leave. Shit. As I'm walking out of the speech area, his words ring in my head. I caused this. This is my fault. I couldn't believe this is happening again. Turning to the corner myself, I watched the bus speed off. God damn it. I begin to walk to my house. Shit. It took me longer to get back at home. To get back home, I opened the front door. Natsuki, Natsuki, you're there. No answer. I checked downstairs, but she's nowhere to be found. Oh no, oh no. Natsuki, I heard upstairs and hear rustling coming from the guest room. Oh no, don't be your dad. I gently opened the door. Oh my god, Natsuki. Oh, Whew. Oh, that scared me for a second. Oh my god. Whew. She's wearing a towel. Whew. Okay. That relieves. Whew. Natsuki punches me in the stomach and almost drops her towel in the process. Colton, do you, did you, do you even knock? Sorry. Get out, pervert. Sorry. <laughs> I managed to get there, get out of it before Natsuki slams the door in my face. Nearly to keep me on my knees, I guess, for air. It takes me a moment to collect myself, but I get back to my feet. From the hallway, I repeatedly apologize for it. I'm sorry. Look on the bright side. At least I didn't see your boobies. It would have been nice, though. Colton, you gotta be more careful. You could have seen me. You know, I know, I know, it was an accident. I'm sorry, okay? You didn't need to hit me so hard, though. I wasn't sure if it was you until I already hit you. I'm sorry, too. Just please knock next time, okay? I will. Don't worry. Now give me a minute to get ready. Sure, I guess. I'll just be in my room. I retreat to my room and wait. That, that, I'm so glad that was that. Whew. I got so scared for a minute. Well, I sat, I, well, I sat at my computer, my phone rings in the process of the crossover. Picking it up, I see it, I see it's from, a text from Yuri. How did she get my number? Is this Colton's number? It's Yuri. I have no choice but to reply. Yeah, it's me. What's up? I need to talk to you about what you saw yesterday. I stare at it for a moment. She wants to talk about the cuts or are you talking about your arms? She takes a moment to respond, sending over a sizable paragraph. Yes. I was, <laughs> was that it? Yes. I was never getting a chance to explain myself. I'm going to have, I'm going to have to be careful how I word my sentence. There's that creepy, mu that's that scary music, suspenseful music. Well, I'm gonna ask. Well, I'm gonna ask the questions in. All right. Did you cut yourself out? You might because you might be depressed. No, I'm not depressed. In fact, it's quite a contrary. The pain is what motivates you. And so, exhilarating. It's almost like a high. Then, how did you start? She takes the time writing response. The three peps in the can that she's tied from flicker one by one. Eventually, her ex her explanation comes out a large bigger. Well, I've always wanted more fascination with nests from when I was young. Before I started, I just collect them, all different styles and numbering colors. They're really beautiful. Well. While reading the books, at some time ago, the topic came up. I was only going to give it a try to see what it felt like, but it grew into a fully fledged addiction. I know Curious Saucy and Marco, there's no good position to be in, but I can't stop. There's just something about the blade officially slicing open my skin that excites me. It's such a thrill, I can't help it anymore. The sedation is too powerful. That's not healthy. This is something else. I don't even know what to do, but there's something nagging at my mind. Speaking of Monica, how did she find out? Another few minutes passed. Another paragraph. It was one day after the club has ended, no more than two weeks ago. I don't even know, I don't remember what happened at the time, but my sleeve slipped up and Monica saw everything. We spoke about it for a few hours, we even tried to intend to talk in private. She tried to help, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell she cared, but nothing to suggest actually worked. Afraid she had to shut down the Club's festival, she took it out, out on me. She assured me that I was going to blame her, even though I really didn't think of any less, but she had no choice to postpone it. All that I said was, we have to try to get in contact with everybody when the festival started. She didn't really take it up. She threatened, threatened me, telling me not to make a scene about it, as in front of the rest of us, she'd tell everyone about my arms. I was very shaken by what she said, not because of what she was threatening, but because I never said that side of her. And if I'm honest with you, Colton, she scares me. Once again, I'm lost for words. I don't know the full story. I can't approach now. I hesitate. If anything, I just want to convince you to see professional help or solve all. If I have to say any of it, I can go on and longer. I see. And have you considered getting help in your own? How can I convince myself to get help when I'm the best I've ever been? The best she's ever been. I don't think she understands what she's getting herself into. Not to say that I fully do. Right. I can hear Nazi key moving through the house, humming to herself. Well, I gotta go. See you later. All right, Colton. I'll speak to you another time in the club, perhaps. But I just want to thank you for trying to help, even if you won't change much. It shows that you care. Smiley, you got a sm smiley face. It's good. I do care. Bye, Yuri. I send her a final text, moving my phone away from the bed. Nazi key knocks at my door. Yeah, come in. See, it's not hard, Colton. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? Hmm. Oh, I know. You can carry my parfait girls collection home for me. So this is your home now, eh? Uh, sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I just thought I could, you know, stay here. I'm a little worried that I'm teasing her too far. 
How could I say no to her? Can't say no to Natsuki. Never. Well, of course, Natsuki. I was only trying to tease you. Though, though it might not. Though, now that you mentioned saying that you actually need this. Turning through the bedside drawer, I moment for a second looking for my spare house key. My phone beeps and Natsuki beats me to check in it. Opening the message, Natsuki recalls, dropping the phone to floor discuss. Uh oh, something happened. Did Yuri send, send us a naked picture? I hope not. Hey, watch it. I like to pick up and I stick in my Natsuki. It's a picture of Yuri. She's sitting on her bed, her scarred arm covering her otherwise bare leg. She's wearing a purple bra, a small crimson heart drawn on her left with a left breast with a red marker. Oh my god, I'm gonna see it though. Or at least I hope it is. I don't know how to respond. Closing my message down, I threw my phone back under the bed. Natsuki is distraught. Colton, what the hell was that on your phone? I have no fucking clue. And her arms, the heart. We need to talk more about her arms. We were talking about her arms before. I told her to get some help, but she wasn't listening to me. Natsuki, I promise I didn't say anything to encourage, to encourage her to send something like that to me. I retrieved my phone from the bed and showed Natsuki the messages regarding her arms. I purposely keep the messages regarding Monica hidden as I don't want Natsuki to jump to a conclusion. She's as confused as I am. Yuri, she needs serious help. Clearly. But why did she send that to you? And why, I'd be so open about this with you. Well, I saw her arms yesterday. As the Monica from the incident, she told me not to tell anyone, so I did it because I didn't know what the hell else to do. Colton, you know you're gonna have to talk about this to her, her about this. It's not healthy to be kind of like this, and it and it doesn't help that she clearly gets off doing it. There must be something, something in her head that made her think this was okay. I've known Yuri for as long as I've been at the club, and yeah, she's a girl that overcatches the moment that anyone shows her any attention. I hate to say it, but it's true. But holy crap, I've never seen anything like that before. Well, we'll talk to her the next chance we got, okay? Alright. Oh, and before I forget, I take the spare house key from my desk drawer and handed the Natsuki. To my surprise, Natsuki's Natsuki mood seems to completely shift. I'm surprised she changed her. I'm surprised she changed it because. Wow, I mean, a girl would probably tell you to pack your shit and get it within the five seconds. For my luck, at least. She pauses for a minute before jumping into my arms. Colton? Eh <laughs> thanks. You're the best boyfriend ever. <gasps> it's official! Yay, we're dating Natsuki! Woohoo! As those words of the same, Natsuki's now she jumps back. That was the first time she she's called me that. I can't help but spot. Hearing her call me that maybe text text at Yuri Monica's argument, everything melts away. They didn't matter. The more I spent with Natsuki, the more friendly I felt this way. Waking up next to her, reading with her, hearing her tell me she loves me, feeling her arms wrapped around me. I never thought I could feel this way about someone. Natsuki, you're the best girlfriend I could ever ask for. Yes. You're just saying that, aren't you? No, Natsuki, I'm not just saying that. I love you more than words can let me describe. I. So it's official then? Yeah. Yes, I guess so. I love you so much, Colton. I pulled inside Natsuki close to me, holding her tight. She pulls off back when the woman stares at me. I left her chin up and kiss her. <laughs> Natsuki buries her face into my chest again, squeezes me, squeezes me as tight as she can. I never want this to end. Two of us stayed locked in the bridge for what it feels like an eternity, but it probably lasted a few minutes. Just as we were separating, the doorbell rings. You want to get that? I nod. Who is it? Natsuki heads back to the bathroom as I head downstairs. I wasn't expecting any visitors today. I peer through the peephole. It's Monica. Waiting patiently. How does she even know where I live? Oh my god. This is not... Oh my god. I crack the door open and see and slip outside. Hi, Colton. Oh, hey. Shouldn't you be at school? Shouldn't you? Touche. What do you want? To apologize... For the past few days, I was a, well, I wasn't very nice to anyone. I just had a lot going on this past weekend, and sorry doesn't fix, it fix everything. I know. I just need to tell you something. I know this doesn't excuse my actions. What is it? I told my parents about the festival. They told me how disappointed they were in me. They think about I have no control over my club. The fact that I couldn't get four people to show up on a special day like that. Told them they expect me, they only ever expect the best from me. There's a reason I wanted to, tr to be perfect all the time. That's why I've been so harsh this week. I was just trying to control things. That I shouldn't be. Monica, what about Siori? You saw her poem? I lowered my voice a little. You knew it was a suicide note. For the record, Colton, I did it. I, I, it was worrying, sure, but I never intimate as that. She ended up confessing everything to me over the text on Wednesday. But still, it's okay if you don't accept my apology. I understand. I was heartless. I said things that I don't think I'll be. I'll think I'll ever be able to take back. I know that. I can't say that I forgive you for what, but for what you've done for all of us. Especially what you did to Yuri, I know. But seeing your perspective, I think I'm willing to give you a second chance. That's all I needed. My front door opens. Oh, there you are. What the hell are you doing here? Colton, why is she here? Natsuki, she's here to apologize. Wait. What are you doing here, Natsuki? 
That doesn't matter. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Of all people to find out, there's something going on between you two, isn't there? I need to change the subject. Monica, we accept your apology. Hey, speak for yourself. We'll see you at the club later, okay? I slowly answered the door, but Monica resists. Aha, uh -huh, not yet. You didn't answer my question, Colton. My brain goes blank. I'm panically injured. it. I don't want her to know that's a gift filled for any beer, but I also don't want Otsuki to be the fan of my life. I'm going to- Oh no, there's a choice! Oh shit, what do I do? Oh, fuck, lie! Nothing's going on between us. Uh, oh, we fucked up. Monica, you're just gonna find out anyway. Colton and I are dating. Well, I can't say I didn't see that coming. It was pretty obvious. I can't bring myself to meet Monica's eyes. The whole situation was so embarrassing. Uh -huh. Colton, your face is so red. So is yours, Natsuki. You two are pretty cute together. I am not cute. Well, clearly Colton thinks so. She's right, you know. Shot it. Can you please just change the subject? Yeah, I love to. Well, Monica, I'm still mad at you for the horrible things you said to all of us. Good, I deserve it. But but be mad at me all you want. I came here to let Colton know how terrible I felt about all this. And well, to you now, I guess. Do you really mean it? Or is this just a portal to get us all back at the club together? Well, both. I started the club so everyone can have a nice place to read and discuss the literature and to hang out and make friends. I don't want that destroyed. Just I just like I just like I don't want our friendship to be destroyed. Colton, do you believe me? I stopped for a moment thinking it over. Could Monica really, ex really expect me to forgive her about what she said to Sherry and did to Yuri? Could I actually do it? I mean, considering her explanation, I feel sorry for the what I did. That doesn't take away from what opera she did. I'm certainly not going to forget about that. So as long as it doesn't happen again, I think I can. Well, yeah, I do. Especially after what she told me. Okay, well, I'm going to trust Colton with, on this one. I guess we'll see you at the club later, then. Thank you. I promise no more outbursts. There better not be. Monica turns to leave but stops herself. Um, Colton, do you know if she always home? I couldn't find I couldn't find her at school. She's the last one to expect. She's the she's the last one I need to apologize if she isn't answering her call. Uh, I'm not sure. You can knock on it more. It's worth a try. Right. Thank you too again. And I'm sorry. See you later. As Monica walks away briskly, Natsuki pulls on my sleeve. Let's go back in. I open the door and head to the kitchen. We have some time before we have to go. Do you want something to eat? Uh, sure. Something about Natsuki seems up. I can't pin it what it is, but something is bothering her. Could it be Monica? What's wrong, Natsuki? Just wondering, why I bothered lying to her about us? I was kind of embarrassed because I know she'd make a big deal about it, I guess. But you know, she found out, she'll have to find out about it, probably. Well, there's something else I was wondering as well. Do you think the other girls accept what, think the other, I don't know. Well, I hope so. It'll be weird to show up and there's only Monica and us. I really won't be the same. Natsuki, Natsuki's right. I didn't think about that. The club without, without a dev will be different with that year into year. Hopefully they'll accept her apology too. There we go. About an hour later, lounging around and watching TV, I realized the school day was about to end. We should get going. Give me a second. I head back to my room and quickly get changed. You're all ready, right? Well, I still don't have my uniform, but there's isn't too much I can do about that. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get going. Natsuki locks the door behind us. As we walk down the street, I feel her fingers curl around mine. It's cute. We, we can't be walking to school. Natsuki, a little more comfortable being efficient in public, takes my hand, hands in hers. As we enter the gates of the school, I see you walking across the courtyard. Yuri! Yuri drops her books. She must have not seen us. Letting go of Natsuki's hand, I reach down to help her. Sorry, Yuri. It's okay. You just startled me. I'll take. I'll take. I'll take. I'll take it. You were here for the club. Yeah, pretty much. You coming? Yeah, Yuri. Are you? Yuri nods in her head in agreement. Good. Come on now. Play the happy music again, please. I want the happy music. Close enough. As we start off for the day in the club again, as we do. Natsuki and I head out to the closet and pick up the next volume. Yuri's in her head, bearing yet another novel. Monica is a, is off in the corner writing something in her notebook. Sorry is absent, as she's been a lot recently. I will be lying and said I wasn't worried about her, but there isn't much I can do right now. Colton, come on. Monica peers her head up and gives me a smirk. I, wait, I really wish she hadn't shown up this morning. I join Natsuki under the window in usual spot. She's already grabbed the next volume, Parfait Girls. <laughs> Something, something, something in your reality. I saw him every cry actually. I listened to it. I'm like, <laughs> I cried. Uh, <laughs> hey, lovebirds. So much for keeping it together at the club. Give me, give it a break, Monica. It's not like that. You know the you know the text in this series is tiny. Yeah, well, yeah, Colton's right. Not only that, we always sat like this. Exactly. So what's the problem? I was just making a joke. Never mind. Uh, Monica walks away without another word. 
maybe give her a second chance, but Natsuki isn't as forgiven as me. I really can't blame her. I'm not entirely certain why I'm even here. I'd certainly be rather be back at home with her. Well, it probably ended up being worth coming here today if we can take her manga back home with us. Hey, Natsuki waves her hand on my face, tickling my fingers to get attention. Are you ready to flip the page yet? Oh, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. And, jeez. Sorry, I just got distracted easily. It's fine. I'm just glad to have. Monica clears her throat. Okay, everyone! The next, I uh, note the page where we left off. Hometown, Natsuki and I join Yuri and Monica back in the center cover. Does anyone have any poems they want to share today? But Siori isn't hidden here. Shouldn't we wait? 3 o'clock. Uh, I, I didn't get a hold of Siori earlier. I doubt she'll be joining us. Siori, I really hope she's getting the help she needs. I may not love her in the way she loves me, but doesn't mean I love her at all. Doesn't mean I don't love her at all. I've known her for the majority of my life. It kills me to see her in such pain. Well, okay then. Yuri falls back into her novel. Monica sits back at her desk and everybody's like it over. Natsuki and I head back to the classroom to read. continue reading. <laughs> Minutes pass by the last second before entering and realize the meeting is over. Ready? Yep, let's go. See you guys tomorrow. It's the weekend tomorrow, dummy. Oh, my bad. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. No need to rub it in. As Natsuki, Natsuki, Natsuki and I are walking into the door, Monica halts us. Wait a second, I can't I can walk you home, Natsuki. No. Err. Uh, I'm going over to Colton's. Yeah, we wanted to keep reading. Well another time then. Monica smiles sweetly. It's done something to do her my favor the past few days. He's just trying to give us a reason to forgive her. But maybe something to need. Natsuki and I navigate the halls to the front doors. Eh. Uh, crap, my collection. If you want to, I'll be only be a second. If you want, I'll be right back. I take off to the banquet halls. I hope Monica hasn't left yet. Has left me. I made it back to the club before she locked the door. Hey, sorry, I forgot something. Oh, no problem. I wanted to tell, talk to you anyway. Monica follows me towards the closet. She blocks the door, looking at me. Stuff. Well, what? You remember what I said about living near you, right? I've seen you going to your place an awful lot. It looks like you, she hasn't been home in days or school. You've been skipping as well, Monica. That's none of your business. It really isn't. I agree. It's really none of your damn business. Oh, but it is. I can't have my club members missing school. It reflects poorly on the club. Yeah, I get that. We just been, been what? Been hiding? No. Are you sure? I found it weird that you never invited me in. Are you two ashamed to be together or something? No. It's not like that at all. Well, that's how it looks on the outside looking in, Colm. You two have a tap to attend Monday. A full day of school. This isn't a discussion. Okay. We'll be here. Good. Monica moves to the side, allowing me to access the closet. I grab Natsuki Paul for the collection bucket and leave Monica behind. Why are you taking that? Natsuki and I ran a lot of home. I hear the lock click clicks as I make my way back to the front door. Natsuki is waiting for me. Let's go. Monica's line of questioning me makes it a little lot easy. Does she, does she know that we've been barely li basically living together? Most importantly, how does she know what? She only knows that we're a couple of few hours away. Few hours away. It's not like Natsuki would tell Monica she's living at my place or why she is. Colton, snap out of it. Did you even hear what I said? Natsuki, I'm sorry. I just got a lot on my mind right now. Whatever, I'll tell you later, okay? What did she say? We walked a few minutes before I reach our, our house. Natsuki lost the door for me. I had my hand on my hands full. I rest the collection on the kitchen table. So, do you want to read or watch a show? I actually have to, I have to go and do something quick. As I try to explain what's going on again, I'll be back in a few hours at most. Oh, okay, Colton. Unless you want to come with. Um, she waits for a second thinking, not really. I don't think she'll want me to, she wants to speak to me right now. That's all right. We'll speak. We'll speak to you. Speak to you later. Yeah, yeah. I give her a kiss and leave her. Leave again. I wait for a few minutes before the bus goes. Where are we going? As I never I see Natsuki's as her father's announcement in the driveway. That reminds me. I still don't have my uniform, but there isn't much I can do about it. I join my feet together for a single stop. Oh, we're back to her. I wash up the bone quickly. Walk quietly down the street. My heart's pounding. What am I doing? What am I doing? In this. I should be. I shouldn't. I should be going going to visit the story, But I walk around the alleyway behind Natsuki's home. I managed to open the gate from the side. I creep inside as we escape through. Please open. I reach for the handle. I give it a firm, but I can put the door sides open. Shit. I stand motionlessly at Nazi Geese house waiting for any I have been waiting for any idea. Oh, he's gonna be home. Close, toy trees, everything I can care. I quickly head upstairs and burst in, burst into Nazi Geese's room. There nothing has been touched. The empty wine bottle and pill container lay on Nazi Geese's bed. The mess is still all over the floor. I shiver calls down my spine. Grim. I begin to rumble through her belongings. I clear her throat. I clear I clear all of her closet. All the clothes I see piled on the bed. I notice a large black suitcase in the corner of her room. Perfect. Unzipping the suitcase, I quickly jam her uniform, pajamas, casual clothes, underwear, and tattoo. Underwear. 
The S is now sweep their makeup accessories and jump them back. One last Brooklyn run in the ring, but lost battle. I lift up. I pit lift up the pack suitcase holding main main floor. I set the suitcase near the door, making my way into the basement. Why the basement? I flip on the light to know about. I clumsily bump the bench and find my way to the right way. I grab a full bottle. Full, why grab a wine? I haven't had a clue. I hope it was. It was. I feel in the weight of the bottles in my bag. I realize there's no one to carry this all the way home. I have to take the bus as far as possible. I check my phone for the time. Not too late. If I can hurry, I could make the next stop. He's gonna miss it. I move quickly as possible up the stairs. I grab the suitcase and slip through the door. I inch the door. I inch the door closed. I hope no, not making any second. I turn around, make a dash for the bus stop. Thank God this thing has wheels. I can see the bus around right the corner as I exit the alley. Oh crap! Before I know it, it's gone. Shit! Great. Now I have to walk all the way home to walk with this. And this is the second time I missed the bus. Oh, bless your fucking heart. Good exercise. The adrenaline is tearing through my veins. I can, can't believe I did that and didn't get caught. Well, not yet anyway. Do -do -do -do. Play some happy music. I ended up having to take multiple breaks. Everyone will stop, even stop for a coffee shop or a drink, but I'm almost home. As I walk past the artist's house, begins to go surround me. I should have gone and tried to talk to her, but I shake the film to pick up the crutches I can. I get to the front door, Nasi Gee, before I get the keys out. I bring the suitcase in her house, Nasi Gee, and question me. Colton, I saw you through the window. What the hell is all this? I never thought about how I was going to explain this. Uh, it's your stuff. What do you mean, my stuff? I lay the suitcase down in the living room, hand it over my, handing my jacket over to the back of the chair. I lay my bag down in the chair, thankfully the bottle's in an oddly silly shift. Nasi Gee just stares at me. A few long moments passed, Nasi Gee. I can't believe this. There's no way you... Nasi Gee hair takes a reach for the zipper. She finally opens the main touch with the majority of her wardrobe. She opens the front pocket, gets filling all of her makeup and issues on the lower room floor. Nazi key is trembling. I'm sorry. I didn't think. Aww. That's cute. Nasally jumps with my arms. Are you touching your butt? Looks like it. Jump, Nazi key literally jumps with my arms. Cold, I love you so much. Why you? Why you would have been stuck with the past couple of pairs of clothes? And you're moving, moving is pro and you're moving in properly, probably, properly. That's why you need, and you need your stuff moved too. Besides, he wasn't there. It was probably my only chance to. She told us speechless. I grinned stupidly. Cold and I, I'm yours. Uh huh. You mean? I think you mean. Absolutely. I wrap my arms around Nazuki and she pushes me onto the couch back. She climbs on top of me. I feel her fingers through my hair and I kiss her neck. I can't help myself. We're gonna lay tonight. You're the good sheep. We're gonna lay. Damn it! What? You're not gonna do that? That's bullshit! Oh well, I guess we're on the video then. <laughs> bullshit. Will they stay with Nutsuki for the rest of my life? Oh well. Well, did we get laid? Who knows? Anyway, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you guys a lot for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I know this video was kind of short. Maybe it was. Who knows? Thank you guys a lot for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Check my social media down below. As always, thank you guys a lot for watching. I'll see you all in a future video. Take it easy.